And this, look at this, 215 members now uh, have voted in favor, including nine Republicans, and that's very significant. The last time, as you and I well remember, the president was impeached, President Trump was impeached. No Republicans voted in the House in favor of impeachment, but already nine have voted right now. Right, one independent, Justin Amash, who had just left the Republican Party, did vote to impeach, impeach the uh, president. Here it is, here it there, is right now, 217 yeah. uh, has just been reached. Uh, we've just witnessed a truly solemn moment in American history. The House of Representatives has reached the threshold for making Donald J. Trump the only president of the United States to be impeached for a second time. Unlike his first impeachment, this, uh, this is a bipartisan vote. At least nine Republicans agreeing with Democrats that this president poses a threat to U.S. national security and to democracy, uh, that he incited the riot at the U.S. Capitol by repeatedly lying that he won the election and by urging his supporters to, in his words, fight like hell. As he heads into the final week of his term, the 45th president of the United States now is poised to face trial in the United States Senate. Uh, and, and there you see the numbers. Uh, we'll show the numbers up on the screen one more time. But this is a truly historic moment. Now 225 votes in favor of impeachment and 10 Republicans, uh, as you can see, have now voted in favor of impeaching the president of the United States. Uh, Jake, uh, this is something that we anticipated would happen, uh, but 10 Republicans joining the Democrats is very significant. It is. Uh, it is the first bipartisan impeachment of President Trump, though it is his second impeachment. Um, but I, I do have to say, as historical as this moment is, I think one week ago was even more historical because that was the time, that was the day that we all witnessed the President of the United States and his supporters, including Donald Trump Jr. and Rudy Giuliani and others, uh, inciting a mob to stage a domestic terrorist attack on the U.S. Congress in which five people were killed, including a U.S. Capitol Hill police officer, and subsequently at least two individuals, including a police officer, uh, have committed suicide. It, it's, a, it's a solemn moment, uh, Dana. It, it's, uh, it's not anything that's fun to report on any of this. Absolutely not. I mean, if you think last Wednesday, this horrific, unthinkable attack on the United States Capitol while they were trying to do their constitutional duty. It is literally written in the day and the time that they, that they certify the Electoral College is written in, into the Constitution. They were attacked. Today, a week, a week later, the president is impeached in a bipartisan way. Again, only uh, 10 Republicans, but that's 10 more than we saw the last time. And then a week from today, next Wednesday, President Biden will be President Biden at 12 o'clock, uh, again, as prescribed by the Constitution. These two weeks are, are mind-numbing. And, uh, you know, we always knew going into the 2020 election cycle that if, in fact, Joe Biden won, it was going to be a dramatic end to the Trump presidency. Nobody could have imagined it like this, with people dead, with blood on his hands, because of his absolute refusal to uh, to accept the reality and the fact. I mean, what they they didn't even talk uh, in, in this very limited article of impeachment about the fact that it was just a couple of weeks ago that he called up the Secretary of State of Georgia and asked him to find votes. I mean, the length to which he went to uh, to, to bust through uh, the free and fair election it is really remarkable. And again, the the fact that he dragged the party and dragged his supporters along with him in, in a way that ended up so violent is, uh, is something that we all will, will never forget and probably never believe. So many lines crossed, so many norms just completely shattered uh, in this transition period. And I think looking back, we all knew this was not going to be a typical transition. But I think, as you said, Dana, nobody could have anticipated that we'd be sitting here today talking about an insurrection on the Capitol and five people dead. And of course, President Trump uh, planning to be absent from uh, the inauguration uh, activities next week, uh, as frankly, he probably should be considering uh, what he uh, incited last week. But 
this is a moment for the country where so many things that we have taken for granted about this process of transferring power from one person to another um, have been really uh, turned on its head in, in this Trump era. And it's a real challenge for this country to pick up the pieces from here. What is troubling about uh, even the 10 Republicans who have joined uh, the Democrats in voting for impeachment is that there is no consensus among an entire uh, political party in, uh, in our system that what happened last week was so wrong that it deserves to be deterred and, uh, and it deserves to be, uh, to be condemned. There, there is not consensus on that. And that's going to be an issue for this country uh, in the future. I don't know whether Donald Trump is going to end up being a candidate in 2024, a twice impeached president uh, trying to come back onto the stage, or whether he will be convicted and prohibited uh, in a vote from holding office again. But clearly, the Republican Party has not abandoned Trumpism. Right. And that remains uh, a, a real, a real a force in our political world right now. And as I throw to Anderson, I want to say I, I agree with your arguments, uh, Dana and, and Abby, that we could not, no one could have predicted exactly what happened. But I will say, Anderson, uh, we've all been covering Donald Trump inciting violence uh, since he ran for president. One of the questions I asked him at the debate in Miami in 2016 uh, was whether he would agree to, to, to lower the temperature. Um, there was Caesar Syak, his supporter, who who uh, sent pipe bombs to members of the media and to, and to Democratic politicians. There was El Paso. Uh, there was the Tree of Life Synagogue. There was Charlottesville. Uh, there have been many, many times that President Trump has been inciting violence one way or another. This was just the most direct such tragedy. Anderson? It, it, the Michigan State House encouraging, uh, praising uh, men who walked, who you know, burst into the Michigan State House with long, long rifles. Uh, getting the face of police officers shouting down uh, elected uh, officials. That was in many ways a, a dry run, perhaps, uh, for what we later saw at, at the Capitol. 100%. Uh, yeah, Jake, thank you for your coverage. We'll come back to you very shortly. I want to bring in uh, Gloria Borger and David Axelrod. You know, we're waiting for the, the gaveling in to actually the reading out of the, uh, the final results. 220, 219 Democrats, uh, 10 uh, Republicans uh, voting to uh, impeach excuse me, 221, it's now gone up, uh, 10 Republicans voting to, uh, to impeach uh, the president. Uh, Gloria Borger, the history of what we're seeing, and when you consider what you're not seeing right now on camera is all the National Guard troops who have been sleeping in the halls of Congress, who are now stationed all around a lockdown uh, Capitol Hill area, armed members of the National Guard. Yeah, inside that chamber, you don't see it, although you do see members in masks now. Um, and outside, it is like an armed camp. I can attest to that coming up to CNN on, on Capitol Hill. I, I know what I saw, and it, it was frightening to me, quite honestly, Anderson. Uh, what we've just witnessed is, you know, as we've all said, he's the, he's the first president in history to be impeached twice. But this happened at warp speed. It isn't as if Democrats woke up and said, you know, wouldn't it be a great idea to impeach Donald Trump uh, before he leaves office? They did not do that. They were the witnesses to the insurrection, and today they became the judges. And what they said, along with, uh, you know, 10 Republicans, what they said is enough is enough. We have to stand up. We have to say something. This might not be politically helpful uh, to a lot of people because the Republicans on the other hand, said, look, you guys just want to cancel Trump, as Congressman Jim Jordan said it. That misses the point. This isn't about canceling Donald Trump. This was about saving democracy as we know it. And I don't think, quite frankly, the American public got the real debate that they deserved because there were very few Republicans who stood up, you can count them on one hand, who said, this was a free and fair election. The president's statement today did not say that. And I think that is what the public needs to hear to reassure them that democracy survives. And I should point out, uh, David, before we hear from you, it is now 231 votes to uh, impeach, 10 Republicans on record. We're still waiting to hear from four Republicans 
uh, on on this. Uh, so we continue to watch that, and uh, we'll bring you the gaveling in uh, when it happens. But David, what what have uh, what has stood out to you? Well, look, I agree with everything that Gloria said. You know, we heard several, Repu many Republican members say, why are we doing this? There's only seven days left. It's vindictive. It's, it's all about Trump. Not really. It's about reestablishing norms in our democracy. It's about standing up and saying, no, this is not acceptable. We will not accept a president inciting an insurrection against the government, against the Capitol, putting people's lives in, 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 uh, in jeopardy. And I think that is is really important the fact that 10 republicans stood up is meaningful i know there you know some people may be disappointed about that number and you'd think it would be more given the fact that many of those republicans were potential victims of this assault uh, the vice president of the united states was a target uh, of this result